An artist without an art. A dreamer with no plans. Ham, no burger. Kind of like idle hands or the devil's playground. You know what everyone needs, but you can't get it to them. Most of us have had this problem, and without proper guidance, we fail every time. Especially if there is no one to share your successes or failures with. And in 1950, we got such a story in Jules de Sins, Night and the City. To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch, to the detectives with all the answers, to the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls, and the trusted ones too pure for this world, and all you double crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Cine Shadow Moonlights, Noir Vimper. Night in the city. The night is tonight, tomorrow night, or any night. The city is London. The titles appear in bright lights. A man runs across the city square and all through the streets and alleys. He's a sharp dresser. He walks into a lady's apartment. She's not around. He goes for her purse, but she catches him. They used to be good people. He's a lowlife, a swindler, a cheat, crook, liar. He's always got a plan. He's so sure, but it never pans out. This man is Harry Fabian, played by Richard Widmark. The big city is at the center of the story, the main character really. Harry and most other people, they get lost in it, and some even control it. He works for Phil, who owns the Silver Fox Club, by attracting and tricking men to the club so they can spend their hard-earned moolah. Mary, his lady, also works there as a singer under the employ of Phil's wife and head woman, Helen. While hustling the wrestling club one night without success, he spots and befriends old Greco-Roman style wrestler Gregorius. You see, Gregorius' son Christo runs wrestling in London, but it's the new style, which is looked down upon by his father. More showy theatrics than true skill. This pleases Gregorius when Harry tells him about his love for the old style. They may be going into business together, but only if Harry can score the money. His boss, Phil, will match 200 quid if Harry can raise it. So, Harry asks the beggar leader, the forager, the riverfront queen, until Helen finally offers it to him, but no wrestling. She wants a license for a club of her own, she hates Phil. He's fat and old, and she's a double-crossing money grubber. Harry agrees and starts stringing everyone along. Fabian Productions. There's a great scene when they lower the sign down. Maybe Harry has finally made it. All does not go well. The closer Fabian gets to his dream, the deeper he gets into his deceit. He hides behind Gregorius when confronted by Christo, tearing them further apart, swindles more money from Helen, offering her a fake license, and pisses Phil off once Phil finds out. Harry's tricks do lead to some brilliant moments, though. When forced to get the Strangler to fight Nicholas by silent partner Phil, Fabian runs his mouth, pissing the Strangler off and running him to Fabian's gym. The Strangler comes in hot and trash talks Gregorius, causing him to agree to a fight. New school versus old school, the fight of a lifetime. Fabian can convince under the right conditions. But Phil is out, so Harry steals from Mary again to pay the Strangler's manager, Mickey Beer. Harry gets his fight all right, but it's not as he planned. A drunken strangler taunts Nicholas until Gregorius steps in. They wrestle and everyone tries to stop it. 
Nicholas getting his wrist broken in the process. It's a fight to the death. Gregorius bests the strangler with a bear hug. See, that's what I do to your clowns. Gregorius has given his all. Christo and him have a rekindling in the office before Gregorius finally passes away. All is lost. Christo offers a thousand pound reward on Fabian. There is a frantic drive around the city to let the underground know. The city versus Fabian. All this deception has finally caught up to him and the hunt is on. Like I said before, I love Richard Widmark. He's a total moralist, self-serving swindler in this, but I also feel for him. If only he hadn't have thrown all of his good graces away on those nothing plans, he really could have made it in the wrestling racket. He had a good idea. But when you live by the city, you die by the city. And everything eventually comes back to bite you in the ass.